With the Artian launched in 2017 and then revised three years on to create the car we're going to look at here, Volkswagen makes another bid for executive segment credibility. Elegance, comfort and technology are all delivered here, along with a five-door coupe body style and a surprising level of practicality, especially with the alternative shooting brake body style. If you're looking for something individual and sensibly different in this sector, it's worth a look. Style is about more than just a badge on a boot lid. We've heard that before, often from the Volkswagen brand, which for some time now has been selling the middle management segment four or five door executive sector Gran Turismo style models with sleeker coupe-like fastback looks. The most recent of these, this Artian, was first launched in 2017 and then updated in 2020 to create the car that we're gonna look at here. The Gran Turismo style body shape, much in vogue amongst automakers in the 60s and 70s, was revived for luxury sector customers by the Mercedes CLS in 2005. Then it was taken up by Volkswagen, who in 2008 created a four-door coupe version of their Passat, the Passat CC, to sell against established prestige brand models like BMW's 3 Series and Audi's A4 in the mid-sized premium segment below. Uh, the upmarket aspirations of that design became more credible when it was replaced by an updated model in 2011, merely christened the Volkswagen CC, which is the four-door car that in 2017, this five-door Artian succeeded in the company's lineup. Cynics tend to dismiss it as a Passat in a pretty frock, but then so is an Audi A4. All these models share the MQB platform and engine wear used these days in most mid to large size Volkswagen Group vehicles. But in this case, a significant amount of work has been put in to differentiate the end result. So much work, in fact, that this Artian is actually closer in size to a full-sized executive car uh, like an Audi A6 than it is to the kind of Audi A4 sector model it's been priced to undercut. This in turn meant that a lot of the engineering here had to be completely bespoke. Uh, the braking and the suspension systems, for example, uh, now they are completely different to those of any other Volkswagen for sale in our market. Uh, in short, this Volkswagen Gran Turismo model is very much its own car. And quite a lot different in this updated form. The most important news is that this five-door hatch has been joined by a stylized estate variant, the shooting brake. And going forward, that's expected to account for over 50% of Artian sales. Uh, there is also some important news on the engine front. There's a much more efficient twin-dosing 2-litre TDI diesel power plant. And there's also an interesting alternative, a 1.4-litre e-hybrid petrol-electric PHEV option. There's a fresh flagship variant too, the 320 PS Artian R. And across the range, there are smarter looks, extra autonomous driving features, and the latest in Volkswagen digital cabin tech. But would it all be enough for the executives being targeted here to ignore close, properly premium badge direct rivals like the Audi A5 Sportback and the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe? Should the lack of a properly premium badge on the bootlid be enough to hold this car back? Let's find out. So, lots to talk about with this revised Artian. New engines, including a plug-in PHEV model, a more responsive four-wheel drive option, new assisted driving tech, and a fire-breathing flagship Artian R performance model with 320 PS all of which can be fitted to a brand new shooting brake body style if you don't want this fastback Gran Turismo hatch. But of course, much has also remained the same, as we said, when we first tested this car. In many ways, the whole Gran Turismo concept rather suits this car. GT motoring is supposed to be about high-speed touring rather than out-and-out -out sports car driving dynamics. Uh, if you judge this Volkswagen purely on that criteria, then you're likely to be quite satisfied with it. Refinement is excellent, particularly with the optional acoustic glass package fitted, but the biggest efforts here have been made in terms of ride quality. The designers were determined that the Artian should deliver the suspension feel of a proper executive class car. 
they brought a clean sheet approach to this Quest, necessarily so because the heavier, lengthier version of the MQB platform that's used in this car meant that springs and dampers couldn't merely be carried over from a Passat, hence the supple four-link independent rear setup with gas-filled shock absorbers and anti-roll bars on both axles. Ideally, this would have been embellished with the option of air suspension, but the original Arteon development budget wouldn't stretch to that, so the engineers instead contented themselves by redesigning the off-the-shelf Volkswagen Group DCC dynamic chassis control adaptive damping package to make it air suspension-like. You get DCC as standard when four-motion four-wheel drive is specified with this car, but it's optional elsewhere in the range provided you avoid entry-level trim, and it's an extra very well worth having. Uh, as usual with these kinds of setups, it works through the settings of an existing driving modes package, uh, which normally controls only steering feel, throttle response, and the automatic gear shift timings. The Artian's mode system is called Driving Profile Selection, and it gives you eco and sport options, plus a compromise normal setting, and the extra comfort option if the DCC adaptive damping is fitted. Adding in ride quality changes to these variations makes quite a lot of difference to the car's tarmac demeanour. Uh, select comfort, for example, and you'll notice the manner in which tarmac tears and even quite severe paved undulations are dispatched with disdain. In fact, if it wasn't for the way that really severe potholes and speed humps can occasionally catch out the DCC system, you might indeed really think that this car did have full executive segment style air suspension fitted. What we're saying is that with the dynamic chassis control, uh, the package makes more of a difference than it ever previously has on a Volkswagen Group car, which is crucial if this Artian really is going to get with the whole GT thing. Plus, as a bonus, uh, the latest version of the DCC setup is infinitely variable. Uh, that's thanks to the addition of an extra individual option on the selection screen, and that allows you to vary damping feel on a sliding scale, offering no fewer than 43 different increments. Yeah, 43, and that starts below the regular comfort indicator and goes beyond what the engineers have labelled sport. Will Artian owners really need such extensive configurability? Well, almost certainly not. Of course, it's useful to have the tools to sharpen things up should the requirement to throw the car around a bit present itself, but in an Artian, you really would need to want to do this, prompted into pacier cornering, say, by lateness. It's unlikely that you'd ever really choose to drive this Volkswagen in that manner, in the way that you might do an arrival BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe. This really isn't that kind of car. For a start, of course, if you do without the top of the range four motion option, uh, it's front driven, unlike that Beamer and the other models that potential customers might be considering, like Alfa Romeo's Giulia and Jaguar's XE. On top of that, the transverse angle at which the engines are mounted in this car, great though that is for releasing interior space, also raises the centre of gravity and pushes weight forward, uh, the opposite of what you'll need for cornering agility. Nor does it help that the body shell's greater size in comparison to rivals becomes very obvious on narrower roads. Don't get us wrong, the Artian is far from being any sort of dynamic duffer. Uh, there's a bit more grip than you'll get in the Passat, even if you don't get yourself a variant fitted out with the optional XDS electronic differential lock system, which ought to be standard and which makes it easier to get the power down at speed through tight turns. All of this will help if you find yourself needing to really push on across a twisting secondary route. In that kind of situation, uh, you'll find that this car is quite happy to work with you uh, once you've adjusted to its rather unusual progressive steering setup, of course. Now, this package, which was originally developed for the Golf GTI, constantly alters the gearing of the steering uh, depending on your inputs, so you don't have to turn the wheel quite so much to get the required turning angle. The system would be a lot better if a bit more feel had been engineered into the helm responses, but once you get over that and you work with it, you'll find that it allows this Volkswagen to be turned into corners at speed with surprising precision and directness. The brakes are another area of the car that required a bespoke engineering package. They're really good too. 
Anyway, enough with all that. We should really talk about what's available beneath the bonnet, shouldn't we? Now, if you've plenty to spend, this is a further area in which the Artin might suffer in comparison to established premium rivals. That's because even though a six-cylinder power plant of the kind that you could have in top versions of the rival Audi A5 Sportback and the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe models will apparently fit into that big engine bay, there's no option to specify one. Well, not in our market anyway, so this car is limited to the usual four-cylinder turbocharged TSI petrol and TDI diesel units that you'll get in virtually every upper-market volume Volkswagen. Many of those have been changed or updated since the Artium was first launched, hence the many underbonnet changes that apply to this updated model. Uh, we'll quote performance stats based on this fastback hatch, uh, since that is our focus here anyway. Not long ago, virtually all sales of a mid-sized, business-orientated contender like this would have been a variance fueled from the black pump. Today, things are a bit different, but even so, Volkswagen still believes that many versions of this model will continue to be sold with its core 2-litre TDI diesel, hence the efforts made to improve that unit with the brand's latest generation Evo series technology. Cylinder deactivation features here for the first time in a black pump fuel Volkswagen Group engine, all part of a complete TDI redesign that's now delivered new exhaust, turbo, fuel injection and thermal management systems. Uh, collectively, the changes have done a great deal for this power plant's efficiency, all without noticeably affecting its performance. Now that sees the volume 150 PS version of this unit uh, developing 340 newton meters of torque. That's enough to give you a rest to 62 miles an hour time of 9.4 seconds en route to 135 miles an hour. There's a six-speed manual gearbox available, but most will want the alternative seven-speed DSG Auto, and if you're happy with that, then you might also want to consider the gutsier auto-only two-liter TDI 200 variant. This top diesel engine adds an extra 50 PS to the output and improves those stats to 7.9 seconds and 145 miles an hour. And it's the only power plant in the mainstream range that can be had with the option of the brand's four-motion, four-wheel drive system. So, Volkswagen still believes in diesel, but the brand is also realistic enough to realize that ultimately the days are numbered for that power source. In large part, this is because of the increased appeal for electrified petrol engines. Surprisingly, this facelifted Artian doesn't introduce the mild hybrid 12 volt technology that's now on offer in this car's Audi A4 cousin or in a Golf. Uh, that's because its original spec MQB platform apparently can't work with that halfway house hybrid technology, which is a bit ironic because it can accommodate something that's much more sophisticated, the full hybrid PHEV plug-in powertrain borrowed from this model's uh, Passat GTE showroom stablemate. Uh, now that mates a 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine and a six-speed DSG automatic gearbox to a 115 PS electric motor. Presumably the Artian could have had that package from the outset, but perhaps it's better that this model line has waited for it until now because the considerably uprated PHEV package that the Arteon e-hybrid uh, now features is much more usable. It's a larger 13.3 kilowatt hour battery and that's increased the PHEV system's driving range by around 30% or around 12 miles. It's now WLTP rated at 33 miles, although we've found that 25 miles is more typical in real world use. Various selectable settings govern the way that the e-hybrid powertrain works. Uh, the car always starts off in fully electrified e-mode before switching to a hybrid mode that sees the electric motor and the combustion engine combining together. As part of this setting, you also get a battery hold option that will save battery charge for later in the trip and a battery charge setting in which the battery will be charged as you drive by the TSI engine. There's also a press-on engine-only GTE mode. Uh, the latter enables a potential 62 miles an hour sprint time of 7.8 seconds en route to 138 miles an hour. That kind of speed comes courtesy of our 218 PS total system output. For completion, let's brief you on the three other engine options in the range. All of them are more conventional petrol TSI units. The range kicks off with a base 1.5 litre TSI 150 PS petrol unit, which gets from rest to 62 in 8.9 seconds on the way to a top speed of 137 miles an hour. 
Those figures sound reasonable, but the reality is a 250 newton meter uh, output isn't really enough to move nearly 1.6 tons of Artyan along with much alacrity. Anyway, Volkswagen can't offer that engine with the DSG automatic gearbox that you'll probably want. All of that means that if you want a petrol Artyan and you can't stretch to the e-hybrid variant, uh, the unit that you'll probably be looking at instead is the 2-litre TSI 190 variant that we've been trying here. This 190 PS model comes only with the DSG Auto Box and it makes 62 in 7.8 seconds en route to 145 miles an hour. If you want to go faster than that, you'll need the flagship Artyan R, which uses a tuned up 320 PS version of this EA888 2 litre TSI Turbo. And that's the calling card of Volkswagen R Performance Designs. It's also used in the T Rock, the Tiguan, and the Golf R branded models. Here, as with all those cars, it's mated to the brand's four motion four wheel drive setup, a system that's lately been much improved, primarily with something called selective wheel torque control. Previously with 4Motion Tech, drive torque could only be varied front to rear. With selective wheel torque control, variable force distribution can also be managed between both rear wheels too, uh, based on speed, throttle angle, lateral acceleration, uh, steering angle and yaw rate. In extreme cornering, up to 100% of torque can be directed to a single wheel, uh, which, as you can imagine, makes a huge difference to agility. I mean, it just fires you from bend to bend. The Artyan R sits 20 millimeters lower than the normal car on standard fit adaptive dampers and 20 inch alloy wheels, uh, behind which you'll find hefty R-spec brakes with blue painted calipers. Plus the driving mode system gets an extra setting, race, which is activated by a little blue button on the steering wheel. Punch that and the 62 miles an hour sprint is dispatched in around five seconds en route to a top speed that would probably be well over 170 miles an hour had Volkswagen not artificially limited it to 155 mph in deference to the green lobby. The Artyan R though will be a rare sight on our roads because its raison d'etre uh, simply doesn't fit the typical priorities of this model line's usual customer. By and large, an Artyan is the kind of car that you choose to lower your heartbeat, not to raise it. That might not sound very exciting, but it's actually very pleasing at the end of the kind of taxing day that a typical middle management customer will often have had to endure. On a typical British B road, this Volkswagen just flows beautifully. Yes, there is a touch more body roll than some rivals exhibit, but for the most part, it's expertly disguised by the supple, languid rhythm that soon has you covering ground in a safe, quick and relaxing manner, aided by the accurate, if not especially feel some steering rack that we briefed you on earlier. Long distances just melt away in Jaguar or Lexus-like style, helped by the superb refinement and the wonderfully supportive Ergo Comfort seats. Earlier we mentioned the fresh generation of drive assist technology which has been ushered in by this revised model, so let's finish this section by briefing you on that. Uh, what's important to understand here is the switch from passive to active technology. Now previously the ACC Adaptive Cruise Control System, which is now standard incidentally across the range, uh, merely braked and accelerated the car based on a preset speed. Now it uses the car's front camera system, GPS data and a host of sensors to drive the car predictively. So when ACC is set, the car knows in advance about bends, roundabouts and upcoming traffic flow. Plus the Artyan will adapt itself to speed limits as you enter them. Adaptive cruise control is also an integral part of this car's clever new travel assist system which is standard above entry level trim and which enables partially assisted so-called level 2 autonomous driving. The pre-facelifted model's traffic jam assist setup, which continues here, had an element of this. It paired ACC technology with the lane assist adaptive lane guidance so that the car could effectively drive itself in traffic queues. But because that tech could only work at up to 37 miles an hour, it was only good for urban conditions. So Volkswagen has developed travel assist from it, and that also works with ACC and lane assist, but it provides partially assisted driving at highway speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. 
That's made possible by the integration of the predictive technology that we just mentioned and the addition here of a new capacitive steering wheel which has to sense your hands on the rim uh, otherwise if warnings are ignored it'll disable all the drive systems and it'll bring the car to a gradual stop at the side of the road. This is all the kind of technology that we think a typical buyer of this car will really like. It's very Volkswagen, as is this Artium. Volkswagen design chief Klaus Sikura believes the Artian merges the design elements of a traditional sports car with the elegance and the space of a fastback. His predecessor, Klaus Bischoff, the man originally responsible for the look of this model, was even more assertive at its original launch, claiming that never has there been a sexier Volkswagen. Now, your perspective on all that may be different, of course, but most would agree that what is on offer here is a pretty smart piece of penmanship. It was carried over into production or almost unchanged from a futuristic prototype that was first unveiled back in 2015 at the Geneva Motor Show. Uh, the introduction of an alternative shooting brake estate body shape uh, as part of the facelift package of updates here has significantly broadened this car's appeal in its segment and even the minor uber subtle changes made to this Gran Turismo hatch body style contrive to add a bit of extra class. The key frontal updates that characterise this improved model relate to this broad, deep grille which gets the latest Volkswagen badge at its centre. Uh, the lower of the two silver crossbars that bisect that roundel now feature LED fibre optic cables so that the lighting elements, uh, the radiator grille and the bonnet merge to form a single unit. You don't notice much difference during the day but it all looks rather smart at night. Uh, this lower apron is different too. It was previously composed of four chrome bars, but it's now made up of three significantly more striking ones. As before, bumper and corner air intake styling depends on the uh, trim level you've chosen a bit. Uh, this sporty R-line spec variant features these unique C-signature gloss black front air intakes. It's all very Jag meets BMW with deep contours running up the expansive sports car-like clamshell style bonnet and a hefty dose of serious overtaking presence thrown in for good measure. Move to the side and the size and character of the Artian become even more evident. Ignore any ignorant colleagues who dismiss this as a prettified Passat. This is quite a different kind of car with quite different dimensions which see it measure in 95 millimeters longer, 39 millimeters wider and 26 millimeters lower than its showroom stablemate. Those dimensions are almost, but not quite, uh, enough to qualify the Artian for full-sized executive segment status, or to put it another way, uh, to make it into an Audi A6 rather than an Audi A4 rival. The shaping from the B-pillar backwards will of course depend on whether you've chosen the shooting brake estate body shape or the Gran Turismo five-door hatch. Uh, both feature this swept-back roof line, and we like the uplighter effect of these sculpted lower panels. Also key is this prominent mid-level character crease that flows through the front wheel arch, pauses to emphasize the fender vent style uh, trim panel beneath the door mirror, and then sweeps right back above the door handles towards the muscular rear haunches here. As usual with Gran Turismo style designs, the wheel rims are intentionally large. You can swap out this model's 19 inch rims for even larger 20 inches if you want to. Uh, with this Gran Turismo hatch model, subtle changes feature at the rear, where that revised Volkswagen badge is flanked by restyled LED light clusters that will feature this darkened tinting, providing you avoid entry-level trim. As usual, most important is the stuff you can't see. In this case, a considerably lengthened version of Volkswagen's mainstream MQB platform, which will justify the considerable investment uh, needed to create it by, in future, underpinning much bigger Volkswagen models slated for sale in other markets. Time to pull back the wide doors with their coupe-like frameless windows. That's the hallmark of any Gran Turismo style design. And take a look inside. Now, we criticised the cabin of this car in its original form for merely replicating the interior of a cheaper Passat. 
has Volkswagen listened and taken action? Rather surprisingly, yes, a complete redesign of fundamental fascia architecture rarely features with merely face lipid models, but that's what we've got here. Uh, the entire dash panel is different. The air outlets, the center console, the surfacing, the trim panels, all of it. Even the door handles and the top sections of the door cards have been changed with leatherette surfacing that can also feature on the dash top. And there's a smarter looking three spoke steering wheel here, which is now of the touch sensitive capacitive kind. Uh, the fabrics and the leather used all around the cabin now feel richer to the touch. And if you can add in the 30 color ambient lighting package or stretch to a top variant like this one that has it fitted, then you'll get yourself a cabin that will feel very high end indeed. Particularly if you stretch to the full Napa leather interior that we have here. Staying with cabin updates, the temperatures of the Climatronic climate control system can now be set by a touch slider, although we're not entirely sure that this rather fiddly feature is much of a step forward. And there are now touch sensitive surfaces rather than physical buttons to control things like uh, the seat heating and also the defrosting of the windscreen and the windows. Oh, and mindful of customer priorities in the middle management segment, Volkswagen has improved the audio system upgrade option to this 700 watt Harman Kardon system, which uses a 16 channel Ethernet amplifier to power a total of 10 high performance loudspeakers plus a further center speaker. Uh, they operate via pre configured sound settings such as pure, chill out, live, and energy. As before, the instrument dials are replaced on all models by Volkswagen's customizable active info display, a 12.3 inch TFT screen with an almost infinitely customizable layout of crystal clear virtual graphics. The customizable bit works around two main things, your preference in the presentation of the two main dials, which can be configured to show everything from driving data to audio settings, and a display between them, which can be uh, separately set up to showcase a whole range of different data, but which looks most sophisticated when it's showing an expandable navigation map. Anything the instrument binnacle can't tell you will almost certainly be covered on or duplicated by this center dash infotainment display. Unfortunately, primary functionality here is touch screen controlled. You don't get the kind of rotary dial controller down by the gear stick that makes the rival BMW iDrive system so much easier to use. Still, this monitor is as effective as it can be in controlling the normal DAB stereo, Bluetooth phone and car informational functions. And it's provided as standard in the form of Volkswagen's usual 8 inch Discover navigation system. Now that's what we have here. Rivals are now offering larger screen sizes than that. But with an Artian, you have to pay extra for a bigger centre monitor that comes in 9.2 inch form as part of the brand's Discover Navigation Pro package. Now that Pro package upgrade, it is worth considering. It incorporates a 64 gigabyte hard drive, a DVD player, voice control and beautifully detailed 3D graphics. Less welcome in our experience with the Pro package is the rather hit and miss gesture control feature and the lack of separate knobs for audio volume and map zooming functions. You do get proper physical controllers for these functions with this ordinary 8 inch screen and as expected both the Discover systems feature Volkswagen's clever App Connect setup. Now this is a starting point for the company's CarNet connectivity system and it's the key tool for bringing the best functions of your smartphone into your Artian via the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and Mirror Link systems. Once this software is activated, you're all set to enjoy things that you maybe never thought you'd be able to access on the move. For example, Apple CarPlay, and that can now be accessed wirelessly, supports the music streaming service Spotify and the video calling app Skype, plus Stitcher, which offers a variety of radio shows and podcasts. Android Auto works with a variety of apps, including Instant Messenger's WhatsApp and Kick, and Google Hangouts too. Uh, the Wolfsburg brand also adds to these with a further range of clever apps that you're free to download. And there's also Volkswagen Media Control. Now that will allow rear passengers here to control in-car entertainment via their phones or tablets. 
If you've owned a well-specified version of one of the company's modern era models previously, then you might also be familiar with this Artian's included Carnet Garden Inform setup. And that gives you in-car online access to a whole range of useful journeying information, uh, everything from traffic news, weather and news feeds to information on fuel and parking prices in your place of destination. Technology, of course, is all very well, but it doesn't count for much if the fundamental cabin ergonomics aren't right on the money. Uh, from the moment you get in here, it's immediately obvious that everything is exactly as it should be in this regard. Although, if you are used to an Audi or a BMW, maybe, you might not especially like the way that these superbly supportive Ergo Comfort seats position you a little higher in front of this three-spoke leather-stitched wheel. Still, that is useful for maximising rear three-quarter vision, and that's rather better than it usually is on Gran Turismo star models of this type. That's despite the narrow rear window and the thick, steeply angled rear pillars. A head-up display is optional, but it doesn't feel quite as seamlessly integrated as rival systems because it projects its graphics onto a pane of glass rather than directly onto the inside of the lower windscreen. As for cabin storage, well, there's most of what you'd expect, uh, like this small lidded compartment at the bottom of the centre stack that's evidently intended for your phone because it incorporates a USB-C point and provision for a wireless charging mat. Uh, there's another USB-C point in this deep lidded box between the seats along with an AUX in port. And just ahead of that is a coin tray next to a couple of cup holder recesses covered by a smart concertinaing top. There's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses here, but the door pockets are of a reasonable size, uh, the glove box is large, and there's useful extra compartment by the driver's knee. Let's take a seat in the back. Uh, the higher roof line of the alternative shooting brake version of this model makes it slightly easier to get into the rear, but even with this uh, Gran Turismo hatch, it's possible for reasonably tall folk to gain access without lowering their heads. Once inside, despite 1.48 metres of interior width, this car isn't suited to the carriage of three adults. Gran Turismo's never are. Uh, the prominently high central transmission tunnel mitigates against that. You do, though, courtesy of the lengthy 2.84 metre wheelbase, get standards of legroom that are on another level from competing Audi A5 Sportback and BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe models. If you take a seat in the back of a rival Jaguar XE after trying this Volkswagen, you'll feel like you're in a super mini, as will also be the case if you try to sit in the rear of the only other shooting brake badged model that's available in our market. Uh, that's the comparably priced but considerably smaller Mercedes CLA shooting brake. The actual legroom figure in this Artian is 1,016 millimetres with both body shapes, and that matches what you get from full-sized executive saloons from the next class up, measuring over 5 metres in exterior length. Class-leading headroom, of course, can't be offered here, but the swept-back roof, as you can see, doesn't compromise headroom too much. There's 940 millimetres of it. Lankier six-footers may find themselves brushing the smart headliner, but only in this hatch model. That's less of an issue in the shooting brake, which offers 48 millimetres more ceiling height. Now, the detail stuff is well taken care of too. Take this neat flap here that rises to reveal not only 12 volt and USB-C sockets, but also a 230 volt port as well. Uh, there are also individual reading lights, code hooks on the B pillars and in the grab handles, surprisingly large door pockets, Isofix outer child seat points, a central armrest with twin cup holders, and lovely touches like this recessed blue strip lighting in the doors. You get the smart ventilation controls for the standard three-zone climate system, and heated upholstery back here is available as an option. Now, if you can't stretch to a model fitted with this panoramic glass sunroof, uh, then compensation is provided by these rear quarter light windows, which bring in much needed light to what would otherwise be a rather dark space. Uh, let's finish this segment by taking a look in the boot. 
Now you only get this powered tailgate if you avoid entry level trim and once it's risen you're faced with a large 563 litre space in this Gran Turismo hatch model which if you're interested is 83 litres more than you get an arrival Audi A5 Sportback. Uh, your Volkswagen dealer is less likely to point out though that this Artian's capacity is 23 litres down on what you find in a Passat saloon. Still, apparently up to eight carry-on suitcases will still fit in just fine. With an Artian shooting brake, there's a 565 litre capacity. Bear in mind that with both body styles, that capacity falls by 110 litres with the e-hybrid PHEV variants due to the battery pack beneath the floor. Here we don't have that beneath the cargo area base, which in this case is mainly taken up by the subwoofer for the optional Harman Kardon audio system. As you can see, we don't have any kind of spare wheel either, though in this case, that's not so much of an issue because all the tires here are of the self-sealing air stop variety, which will allow you to limp to the nearest garage in the event of a puncture without ruining the rubber carcass. No 12 volt socket is provided back here, but you do get a couple of pull out bag hooks plus a large section of the right here with a lift out panel, a recessed area on the left and four tie down points. Plus there's a hatch in the rear bench which will allow you to push through longer items like skis into the cabin. If you need more room than that, pushing forward the 60-40 split seat back frees up as much as 1,557 litres of total fresh air in this hatch model and more than two metres of loading length between the front seats and the boot lip. For the shooting brake estate variant, total carriage capacity is rated at 1,632 litres. From the launch of this updated model in late 2020, Artian pricing started at around £32,000, with the rest of the mainstream range pitched up to around £43,000, although you'll need significantly more than that for the flagship Artian R variant. Below top R level, there are three trim specs available, SE Nav, Elegance, or as in this case, uh, R Line. More than half of all customers are expected to pay the £800 increment, uh, which is required to go from this five-door hatch uh, to the alternative shooting brake estate derivative. Choosing the right engine and drivetrain in this car may well require quite a bit of careful thought. Uh, the best value unit in the range is the base 1.5 litre TSI petrol unit with 150 PS, but that can't be had with the auto gearbox that most customers for this car want. And the 1.5 litre engine does sometimes struggle a bit with hauling nearly 1.6 tonnes of Artian about. That explains why most customers for this model line uh, tend to start their search with the 2 litre TDI 150 PS diesel power plant. That is the only other engine in the range which can be had with manual transmission. Most though who choose it uh, opt instead to spend a further sum around £1,500 on VW's usual 7-speed DSG Auto, by which point your starting spend for Artian ownership will have risen to uh, just over £35,000. That is only a fraction less than you would need for the mid-range petrol variant, the 2-litre TSI 190 PS model, which gets that auto transmission as standard. If you can stretch to a starting spend of around £40,000 for your Artian, there are two options. Either the 2-litre TDI diesel in uprated 190 PS form, which is the only mainstream engine in the range that can be ordered mated to 4-motion four 4-wheel four drive for an extra £1,700. Or alternatively, you might want to follow the current Zeitgeist and opt instead for the e-hybrid PHEV plug-in Petri unit, which is now available in this car. Uh, something like a shooting brake e-hybrid version of this model, uh, while well, that really would represent a stylish, individual, topically efficient and rather unique choice in this segment. On to the value proposition. In every aspect of this car, Volkswagen does its best to distance it from its more mundane Passat model, and it does so again when it comes to pricing. Now, where uh, direct comparisons uh, between those two models can actually be made, uh, you'll find that most versions of this Artian uh, are pitched around £4,500 above their humbler showroom Passat saloon stablemates. Uh, obviously, though, the difference would be less, uh, around £3,000, if, as is perhaps more likely, you were instead comparing this Artian to a Passat estate. 
Two more relevant rivals if you're looking for similarly styled Gran Turismo fastback shape models to pitch against this Artin hatch are Audi's A5 Sportback and the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe. Now you'd expect those uh, premium badge models to cost more than this Volkswagen and sure enough uh, they do. Using the most popular Artian 2 litre TDI 150 PS model as a benchmark, uh, that's a variant that as we've said is priced in auto form from just under £35,000. You'd be looking at needing around £4,000 more uh, for either an equivalent Audi A5 Sportback 35 TDI or a comparable 4 Series Grand Coupe 420D. Do you really need a premium badge that much? Possibly, but you won't find anything with a premium badge with quite the pavement presence of an Artian in shooting brake form. Now yes, this body shape is basically a station wagon, and yes, uh, you could obviously compare it with a sportily trimmed version of the Mercedes C-Class Estate, uh, the Audi A4 Avant, or the BMW 3 Series Touring Estate, but the shooting brake formula, that really is a rather different interpretation of what estate motoring should be. Now the only other car that's on the market which uses that shooting brake moniker and which tries to replicate that is the estate version of the Mercedes CLA. A CLA shooting brake though, uh, that is a smaller class of car. It's rather more golf estate sized, yet it still manages to cost around £1,500 to £2,500 more than an Artian shooting brake when equivalent power plants are factored in. Uh, the Merc is slightly pricier to run too. There aren't really any other direct rivals. Uh, Artian money will conceivably buy you premium mid-sized models like the Jaguar XE, the Volvo S60 or the Alfa Romeo Giulia, but they only come as saloons. Uh, for a proper Gran Turismo body shape, uh, a comparison, you'd really need something like a Kia Stinger. Uh, that's a car that used to be a direct rival to this Volkswagen. It isn't really a direct rival anymore though because the Stinger now only comes in top GTS V6 361 BHP form for around £43,000. Although, in that guise, it would be an interesting alternative to an Artian R. If having considered all that, you conclude it is an Artian that you really want, then you're probably going to expect this VW to be better equipped than its premium rivals. And sure enough, even base SE nav trim gives you plenty of kit. Uh, we were a little surprised to find that it was necessary to pay extra for a powered tailgate, uh, tyre pressure monitoring, a spare wheel and voice activation for the standard infotainment system. Uh, there are no selectable driving modes either at this level in the range and that's the kind of thing that executives browsing in this segment really now expect. Otherwise though, uh, most of the features that you would expect to find in a car of this class all seem to be present and correct. Uh, let's start with the uh, highlights here, headlined for us by the handsome full LED headlamps. Now these feature washers and they have a dynamic light assist system and that dips them at night and it also reacts to road conditions and the weather. Plus they can even predict and illuminate oncoming curves in the road. The beams predict corners using data from the standard Discover navigation system, which inside the car is activated via an 8-inch center dash screen. Uh, via that display, you'll also access an 8-speaker DAB stereo system with Bluetooth phone connectivity, uh, a speed limit display, and a whole range of useful driving data. Plus, there's also Volkswagen's Carnet App Connect package, which allows you to link in your smartphone via the Apple CarPlay, uh, Android Auto and Mirrorlink systems. Uh, there is wireless connection for Apple CarPlay. Also standard is the brand's Carnet Guide and Inform setup. Now that gives you in-car online access to a whole range of useful journeying information. Uh, everything from traffic news to information on fuel and parking prices in your place of destination. Uh, and you also get the Volkswagen Media Control Package. Now that allows passengers to control the media system using their smartphones or tablets. So kids in the back, for example, they can find their favorite radio station and then they can respond to a bellowed adult command to turn it down. As well as all that, you get most of the other equipment items you'd expect at this price point. 
things like 17 inch alloy wheels, auto headlamps and wipers, uh, rear tinted glass, front and rear parking sensors, power folding mirrors, LED rear light clusters and an alarm. Inside there's climate control that also cools the glove box, an auto dimming rear view mirror and the rear seat ski hatch along with an impressive roster of basic safety equipment that we'll get onto in just a few moments. In addition, there are quite a few other standard Artin features that you really might not expect to be standard on a car in this class. Uh, the active info display, for example, that's a 12.3 inch TFT screen, which completely replaces the usual instrument binnacle dials with fully customizable menus and information. Uh, there is also a superbly supportive Ergo Comfort six-way power adjustable driver's chair. Other nice to have standard features that might cost you more elsewhere include ambient lighting, stainless steel pedals, heated windscreen washer jets, and a third zone for the climate control system so that rear seat folk can separately control their temperature. Uh, as for driving stuff, uh, there's the progressive steering setup, which was originally developed for the Golf GTI, which constantly alters the gearing of the steering uh, depending on your inputs. So going lock to lock, takes just two turns and allows you to keep your hands in the same place on the wheel when you're driving on tight twisting roads. And of course there's an app, there's always an app isn't there? As a buyer of this Volkswagen you'll get free access to a WeConnect Plus app via which you can remotely interact with your Artin by your smartphone. Uh, you can do things like preset cabin temperatures and you can lock or unlock the doors from wherever you are in the world. Uh, you can also use the app to access driving data and to enable light activation. Is it worth finding the extra to trade up to mid-range elegance trim? Well, the extra spend around £2,000 does certainly get you a more sophisticated feeling car. Uh, perhaps the most significant addition is Volkswagen's latest travel assist driving assistance system. Now, we will cover that in a moment when we get on to talking about autonomous drive tech and safety. Should you want more say in the human aspects of the driving experience, then Elegance Level uh, gives you that too, and that's courtesy of Volkswagen's driver and profile selection driving mode system. Now that offers uh, eco, normal and sport settings, and they also allow you to change throttle feel, steering feedback, and with the auto box, gear shift timings too. Driving profile selection also has an individual option, and that allows you to set your own drive parameters. The e-hybrid models get DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control, uh, Adaptive Damping 2. Elegance variants also look a bit more, well, elegant, thanks to larger 18-inch wheels, door mirrors finished in a matte chrome, matte black combination, and tinted LED tail light clusters with scrolling progressive indicator lights. Plus, there's extra chrome trim on the bumpers, the lower doors, and the exhaust pipes. At this level in the range, you get a more upmarket feel inside too, and that's thanks to part leather upholstery and stainless steel pedals. Plus, elegant spec entitles you to a powered tailgate, keyless entry, uh, heated front seats, larger 18-inch wheels, uh, heated washer jets, and voice activation for the Discover infotainment setup. There's also some extra camera safety features. I will brief you on those in a few moments. And the touch sensitive capacitive steering wheel, which is necessary to work the travel assist system. Enough with standard elegant spec. Uh, we did earlier mention that there was an alternative and a sportier trim option, and that's R Line. And it gives you a series of cosmetic exterior and interior upgrades that'll give your Artian the more dynamic look and feel that you probably want. Uh, our line spec, that's the one we have here, gets you a styling pack which includes an R line design front bumper with unique C signature gloss black front air intakes. Uh, there is also body color for the door mirrors and larger 19 inch Montevideo black alloy wheels. This Gran Turismo hatch also gets a rear spoiler at this level. Inside with an R-Line spec Artian, there's Titan black roof lining and smarter silver rise decorative trim panels, along with R-Line trimming for the steering wheel, the door sills and the front seats. At this level in the range, you also get a 30 color ambient lighting system and a powered glass sunroof, which is of the bigger panoramic kind in the shooting brake. 
onto extra cost additions available across the range. If you have the funds to go further with infotainment in your Artyan, uh, then the optional feature that your salesperson will probably be most eager to talk about is Volkswagen's flagship Discover Navigation Pro media setup with its larger 9.2-inch color touchscreen. Now, this includes gesture control, and that allows common functions to be activated with just a twirl of your finger. Uh, plus, the package also includes a 64-gigabyte hard drive, 3D mapping, and a DVD player, along with an extra Carnet Guide and Inform Plus package, which gives you even more online journeying information and covers things like fuel pricing, weather reports, and news feeds. Uh, in addition, the Pro package also includes the voice control functionality that can cost extra on the ordinary 8-inch Discover Navigation setup. If you do specify this extra cost 9.2-inch screen Pro media system, uh, then your dealer will offer you the optional advanced telephone connection package, uh, which gives you a storage compartment in the front center armrest, which has an integrated USB socket for phone charging, uh, plus your handset will be connectable to the vehicle's external aerial for improved call reception. And other options? Well, let's start with the driving stuff. Uh, we'd want the XDS electronic differential lock, which improves traction out of tight turns. Many Artian buyers will want the head-up display, and if you have paid extra for either a rear-view camera or even better, for the 360-degree surround view camera setup, you can also add on Volkswagen's Park Assist system, which can automatically steer you into the tightest spaces, uh, whether they're parallel or perpendicular to the carriageway. If you do a lot of highway work and you appreciate even more subdued levels of cruising refinement, then you might also want to tick the box for the acoustic pack. Uh, that will give you sound insulating laminated glass uh, for the side windows and for the rear screen, plus additional sound insulation too. A somewhat pricey extra is the IQ Light LED matrix headlight system, but that £1,250 setup is undoubtedly very clever in the way it predicts the kind of light beam you're going to need and tailors it to your surroundings. Uh, that's an option to choose if someone else is paying perhaps. Uh, other extra cost niceties include a heated climate windscreen, a heated steering wheel and heated outer rear seats. With SE nav spec, you might want to add in part leather upholstery, a powered tailgate and keyless entry. With elegant spec, you might want to add ambient lighting and a glass sunroof. Uh, across the range, if you really wanted to spoil yourself, you might want to tick the box for one of the front seat upgrade options. Uh, now there's a choice of either a 12-way adjustment package or a couple of 14-way adjustment seat options, all of them with four-way adjustable lumbar support and massage features included. A full leather Nappa upholstery option is also available. Uh, ideally, you'd want that with the carbon Nappa stitched leather finish that we've been trying in this car. If you're ticking boxes and someone else is paying, uh, then also don't forget to add the optional Harman Kardon 700 watt 10 speaker sound system. As for aesthetics, when well, unless you want your Artyan with solid Urano grey or pure white paintwork, you're going to have to pay extra for your chosen paint finish. As usual, there's the option of various metallic paint shades. Uh, we have King's Red Metallic here. Uh, there's also a pricey premium signature Oryx White paint finish available too. Uh, you may want to look at upgrading the wheels. Uh, there's a range of different 19-inch designs. Plus, there are various 20-inch rims which suggest you only specify with the DCC dynamic chassis control system to smooth out the ride. If you want to personalize the cabin and you've chosen mid-range elegance trim, you'll be offered the option of adding in eucalyptus wood inserts. As for practicalities, well, it is disappointing that Volkswagen now makes you pay extra for either a space saver spare wheel or a full-sized one. Uh, we would also want to look at the usual mud flaps and carpet mats and the range of roof racks, roof boxes and carriers for things like bicycles, skis and snowboards. Uh, the extra cost swiveling tow bar, that can also take a bike rack. There's additionally the option to specify an interior coat hanger a useful luggage compartment mat, uh, flexible and semi-rigid load liners and a luggage set.
Enough with options, let's take a look now at driver assist systems and safety provision. Uh, the standard inclusion of adaptive cruise control and lane assist adaptive lane guidance enables Volkswagen to offer its latest travel assist system, which, as mentioned earlier, is standard above entry-level trim and enables so-called level 2 autonomous driving at high speeds. Now, it's basically a development of the previous traffic jam assist setup, but whereas that old automatic longitudinal and lateral guidance system could only be used at up to 37 miles an hour, Travel Assist can completely control the car for you at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. That's providing you keep your hands on the new capacitive steering wheel. Although uh, we read recently that taping an uncooked sausage to the steering wheel rim would be enough to fool the system's sensors into thinking that you are still holding it. So perhaps a little more uh, development is necessary there. Another nice feature now built into the ACC Adaptive Cruise Control System is Predictive Cruise Control, which uses images from a windscreen camera along with navigation data to adjust the car's speed ahead of bends and speed restrictions. Plus, of course, ACC can do all the usual things. It can adapt your RTN speed to the vehicles ahead, and in the event of a tailback, it can bring the car to a controlled stop and start it off again uh, without driver input. If your Artian has DSG automatic transmission, it'll also now come with a clever emergency assist system and that can take over driving duties completely if you uh, become incapacitated and it'll steer the car to the side of the road and bring it to a safe and controlled stop. What else? Uh, well, the lane assist feature just mentioned now incorporates road edge recognition and that detects curbs, grass verges and lane markings. And the full LED headlights include high beam assist, which automatically dips them at night. Uh, you would expect some sort of autonomous braking system on a car of this kind these days. Uh, Volkswagen's is called front assist. And as usual with these kinds of setups, it scans the road ahead as you drive. If a potential collision hazard is detected, uh, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. For this revised Artium model, this city emergency braking system has been enhanced with pedestrian monitoring, which is more specifically able to identify people or cyclists who might be about to inadvertently step out into your path. Uh, should that sort of situation happen, or if, for example, another driver suddenly breaks in front of you, then further help is provided by an emergency steering assist system, which automatically activates as soon as you have to avoid an obstacle. After visual and acoustic warnings, this will introduce targeted braking intervention from the assistance system, which will help to stabilise the car should you have to perform an evasive manoeuvre. Uh, avoid entry level trim and you'll also get Volkswagen's side assist with rear traffic alert package which incorporates two features, a blind spot monitor that warns you if you're about to pull out to overtake when there's a vehicle in your blind spot and a rear traffic alert feature which will warn you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. All of this is in addition to all the usual features that come fitted across the Artian range which have helped to justify this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing. There are seven airbags, including two that run the length of the cabin at window level and one beneath the steering column to protect the driver's knees. Uh, you'll also get Isofix child seat fastenings on the rear bench. And we like the inclusion of an automatic post-collision braking system, which recognises when an impact occurred and brakes the car to prevent it from being uncontrollably propelled into oncoming traffic. It's also worth mentioning uh, that one of the features of the WeConnect Plus app that we mentioned earlier is an emergency call e-call system, which in the event of an accident where the airbags are triggered will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. Other conventional safety features include the normal ESC stability control and ASR traction control systems, plus MSR engine braking control, which will stop you skidding if you change down abruptly on a slippery surface. If you do get into a skid, a DSR steering assistance feature will help you to steer out of it. 
and you get an ABS braking system that's further assisted by CBC cornering brake control through the bends plus an HBA hydraulic braking assistant which helps to reduce stopping time when you really slam on all the anchors in an emergency. Plus all Artians get a hill hold function to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions and a driver alert system which will warn you if sensors detect drowsiness. Uh, the usual tyre pressure sensors are standard with a full tyre pressure monitoring system uh, on the options list. Uh, there are also anti-whiplash front head restraints and an active bonnet, the rear edge of which rises instantly to minimise head injuries in the nightmare scenario of an impact with a pedestrian or a cyclist. Volkswagen's pre-crash preventative occupant protection system, standard on all Artians, costs extra here unless you specify elegance trim. Uh, pre-crash preventative occupant protection uses sensors from the front assist setup to prepare the car to help you to survive an impact if those sensors deem a collision is inevitable. Uh, that'll mean your belts will be instantly pre-tensioned while the windows and the sunroof, if it's fitted, will be immediately closed. Rear side airbags cost extra too. Throughout this test, we've remarked on the advantages of the Artian's extra size in comparison to its obvious class rivals, but there is a downside to that, of course, and that's weight. Sure enough, in a Gran Turismo market segment where the average diesel-powered Audi A5 Sportback weighs only a fraction over one and a half tonnes, this Volkswagen does seem a little on the portly side when you consider that the scales register a curb weight which is around 130 kilos more that is quite possibly the combined weight of a car full of passengers. You would think that this would have a reasonably significant impact on your running cost returns. So, let's see. At the original launch of this model back in 2017, Volkswagen put considerable effort into creating a product with a core level of efficiency which would keep its running costs competitive throughout its life cycle. Hence the cleverness of the high-tech MQB platform, which combined with the benefits of the Blue Motion technology, which Volkswagen applied across the engine range. All of that meant then, and pretty much means now, that an Artian really doesn't cost much more to run than a Passat. As with the latest version of that car, all the engines on offer here, including the TSI petrol units, now have particulate filters as standard fit. Plus, as you'd want, all the power plants now conform to the industry's most stringent Euro 6D Temp RDE Step 1 compliance standard. Let's get to the WLTP figures, which will base on this fastback body shape with the smallest wheels possible, ideally 18 inches. Uh, there is a marginal but not a significant efficiency downside if you choose the shooting brake estate body style instead. Uh, rather more of a negative impact will be delivered by upgrading to larger 19 or 20 inch wheel rims. In this film, we've briefed you on the new 2-litre TDI 150 PS diesel engine's Evo series redesign, uh, its cylinder deactivation, plus its new exhaust, turbo, fuel injection and thermal management systems, all changes aimed at driving down running costs, plus their so-called twin dosing catalytic converter technology, which reduces NOx emissions by up to 80% compared to the previous engine. The result sees a typical Artian fastback fitted with that Evo power plant a return up to 57.6 mpg with a manual gearbox or up to 58.9 with a DSG Auto. With either transmission, the CO2 return is rated at up to 128 grams per kilometre. Despite this Artian's lack of the kind of 12 volt mild hybrid technology that you would get in a directly comparable Audi A5 Sportback 35 TDI, uh, the 2 litre TDI 150 PS version of this VW is able to almost directly replicate that Audi's fuel figure. Uh, if you're looking at the shooting brake variant, then you might be interested to know that these figures also better the returns that you get from the only other similarly badged model on the market, the Mercedes CLA shooting brake in 220D form, even though that Merc is a much smaller car. To beat the 2-litre Evo diesel's frugality in this Volkswagen, you have to opt for something quite different, and that's the clever e-hybrid petrol plug-in hybrid version. 
Now, if you viewed other sections of this film, then you'll know that this makes a 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine with a 115 PS electric motor powered by a large 13 kilowatt hour battery, which when it's fully charged, can now provide up to 33 miles of all electric WLTP rated driving range. As a result, it's quite likely with a typical commute that an RT and E hybrid owner would only actually need to visit the fuel station every month or two. Assuming you install the 3.6 kilowatt wall box charger in your garage, uh, the battery can be replenished from empty in three and a half hours. From an ordinary household plug, uh, the charging time figure would rise to around five hours. The result of all this technology is a faintly ludicrous combined cycle fuel figure of up to 256.8 mpg and a super clean CO2 output of up to 26 grams per kilometre. Those readings are based around an elegant spec fastback e-hybrid being used in its most frugal hybrid driving mode. Of course, in the real world, an Artin e-hybrid won't deliver anything like those readings, but the important thing is that the government believes them. Hence, this variant's super affordable 10% benefit in kind taxation positioning. Uh, a comparable 2 litre TDI 150 PS model is rated at 28%, and a low car tax band A rating. That, of course, means a significant company car tax saving. A slight downside with the PHEV variant lies with the fact that the battery's positioning under the rear seat uh, means a reduction in fuel tank size from 66 to 50 litres. But even so, with a fully charged battery and a full tank of fuel, a range of over 620 miles ought to be possible. So uh, you could, for example, travel from London to Paris and back again without refueling. But to do that, you'll have to use the various provided drive modes proactively and keep an eye on the various provided e-displays. There's an electric range monitor plus an interactive electric flow diagram which shows at any time what's being powered by what. Plus there's a zero emission screen which briefs you on the amount of fully electrified mileage that you've completed since the start of your journey. On the instrument binnacle, there's a left-hand dial that will give you green charge and blue percent power sections to help you to drive more economically. The car will always start off in fully electrified E-mode before switching to a hybrid mode, and that sees the electric motor and the combustion engine combining together. As part of that setting, you have a battery hold option that will save battery charge until later in the trip and a battery charge setting in which the battery will be charged by the TSI engine as you drive. It's all quite convincing, although you still might struggle with the idea of finding £40,000 for an RT and e-hybrid when the diesel variants start at around £34,000. But look closer at the figures. With comparable spec and an auto gearbox, the difference between an RT and 2 litre TDI 150 PS model and an RT and e-hybrid narrows to around £2,500. And it reduces further to around £1,400 when you take finance and other subsidies into account, as you'll find if you consult the very useful cost calculator tool provided on Volkswagen's UK website. Consult that as we did before this test and you'll find that over three years and 20,000 miles with all costs taken into account, uh, an RT and E hybrid will cost £26,728.78 to run over that period, which is £2,712.69 less than you'd pay to run a directly comparable RT and 2 litre TDI 150 PS DSG Auto. Uh, the biggest saving with the E hybrid variant comes with fuel and energy expenditure. It's down from nearly £6,000 in diesel fuel payments, which would be incurred by the TDI model, to just £1,846 over that term with the PHEV model. And that's really impressive. And it's all food for thought in the great petrol hybrid versus diesel debate that's raging at present amongst business customers. If you still can't quite justify the stretch to an RT and E hybrid and you want to stick with petrol power, then the version of this car that you might be considering is the base 1.5 litre TSI petrol variant, which only comes with manual transmission. Now this unit hasn't been embellished with fashionable mild hybrid tech, but it does still feature active cylinder technology, which under light throttle loads cuts off the second and third cylinders for greater efficiency. As a result, an Artian 1.5 litre TSI fastback can deliver up to 44.8 mpg and up to 144 grams per kilometre of CO2, and that's a very reasonable showing for a car of this size.
opt for any of the other engines on offer, all of which are mated to DSG Auto gearboxes, and your Artium will cost significantly more to run. The 2.0-litre TDI 200 PS diesel model manages up to 51.4 mpg and 145 grams per kilometre in front-driven guys, or up to 46.3 mpg and up to 159 grams per kilometre in four-motion form. The alternative 2.0-litre TSI 190 PS petrol derivative that we're trying here manages up to 40.9 mpg and 157 grams per kilometre. Helping with all these readings are all the usual eco-minded features that you now expect to see on a car of this kind. Regenerative battery charging to reclaim energy that would otherwise be lost under braking. Uh, Start-stop system which will cut the engine when you don't need it, you know, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the traffic lights. And sleek aerodynamics which see the fastback version of this design registering a wind-cheating drag factor of up to 0.26 cd. If your Artin is an automatic, you'll get the benefit of Volkswagen's latest DSG transmission technology too, which includes a coasting function, which at cruising speeds will disconnect the gearbox, uh, leaving the engine to idle until you need it. Of course, the efficiency figures you'll achieve will depend to a great extent on how you drive, and that's another area in which this Artian aims to assist you. If you have a variant with the driving profile selection driving mode setup, then you'll have the option of an eco setting, which will tweak all of the car systems for ultimate frugality. Can you be bothered with all this? Well, if you can't, there's no good complaining that the quoted running cost figures don't match those that you actually achieve. Uh, the other cost-related facts which surround this Volkswagen, though, uh, they are all rather more straightforward. You wouldn't expect an aspiring premium brand model to achieve residual values that are quite as high as those of the established players, but nevertheless, this Wolfsburg contender doesn't do too badly. Experts' quick car cost reckon that after three years and 60,000 miles, a volume 2-litre TDI 150 PS uh, DSG Artian would still be worth around 34.7% of its original asking price. To give you some perspective on that, a comparable Mercedes C-Class and Jaguar XE models achieve 35.2 and 39% respectively. We should give you a feel for your potential insurance costings too. Diesel ratings run from Group 21E to 23E for an entry-level 2-litre TDI 150 PS. They rise to Group 27E or 28E for the rear-driven 2-litre TDI 200 PS model. Insurance is Group 29E for the 2-litre TDI 200 4 motion variant. In the petrol range, the 2-litre TSI 190 PS model is rated at Group 21E or 22E. This 2-litre TSI 190 PS derivative rates at Group 34E. The e-hybrid variants rate at Group 28E. As for servicing, well, as usual with Volkswagen models, there's a choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance options. Uh, you'll choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year. And with this, uh, the car will typically be looked at every 12 months. If your daily commute is more than 25 miles and your Artian will regularly be driven on longer distance journeys, then you'll be able to work with the flexible regime instead, and that can see you travelling up to 18,000 miles between garage visits or every two years, whichever is sooner. Uh, the TDI engines that many customers will choose, uh, like most modern diesel engines, get a selective catalytic reduction filter, which is there to cut down on nitrous oxide, and with similar rival units, uh, they're designed around the injection of a urea-based solution called AdBlue into the exhaust gas stream to help to clean up emissions. The liquid used is stored in a 13-litre tank mounted at the rear beneath the boot, and this will need topping up as part of regular servicing. What else? Uh, well, if you're considering the most powerful petrol or diesel variants, do bear in mind that almost any significant extra cost feature that you add will take the value of your car over £40,000, and that means that you'll be liable for the £310 a year road tax supplement that's applicable to cars priced over that figure. And warranties? Well, the standard package is three years and 60,000 miles. Can't really see why Volkswagen couldn't extend that mileage limit to 100,000 miles since that's what's on offer uh, from its mechanically very similar LCV models. Doing that, though, of course, wouldn't give Volkswagen dealers quite so much of an opportunity to sell extended warranty packages. There's one for four years and 75,000 miles, or if you plan to see a bit more of the world in your Artian, there's a five-year, 90,000-mile package. 
Whatever your decision, the car will come with three years of pan-European roadside assistance and that has no mileage limit. The paintwork warranty lasts for three years and as you'd expect, uh, this model is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion guarantee too. The Artyon e-Hybrid has a separate eight-year battery warranty and that also covers the battery for up to 100,000 miles. There's lots to like here, providing you admire the looks and you don't care that people might think that you couldn't afford an Audi or a BMW. And like some of its volume brand rivals, Volkswagen has done more than just throw wood and leather at an existing medium range model in its efforts to create a genuinely premium mid-sized executive contender. There's proper cutting edge technology here and it's all been beautifully packaged, especially in this updated model. Forget the Passat comparisons that rather put premium segment people off this car's CC model predecessors. An Audi A4 or A5 actually has more in common with the Passat than this Artin does, and no one ever looked down their nose at one of those, did they? Though mainstream variants of this Volkswagen uh, may not ultimately save you very much over established mid-sized models of that sort, uh, they do offer you an arguably better looking car with significantly more equipment and considerably greater interior space, especially if you choose the shooting brake variant, which to our eyes is easily the most stylish estate in the segment. Of course, there are a few things that also go with Artian ownership that you might not like quite so much. For a start, you'll certainly be paying quite a lot of money to make a statement about how independently minded you are. And in return, you'll be getting a car that isn't quite as dynamically adept as its obvious rivals. Nor is it quite as efficient and it may not hold on to its value quite as well either. Still, if you take the view that the deal you're more likely to get up front will compensate for that, and that what this car lacks when it comes to driving on its door handles, it more than makes up for with exemplary transcontinental style cruising ability, then you could well remain an enthusiastic Artian convert. And we'd certainly understand it if you were. In summary then, should you be undecided between the mid-sized and full-sized executive segments and want something practical and spacious, yet with more style and individuality than is available from the usual business class suspects in these categories, then the Artian could well be a perfect choice. Style knows no brand boundaries. And if you doubt that, then you need to try this car.